According to the American Housing Update, 40% of affordable housing is down from pre-pandemic. What that means is that all lower income and affordable housing pre-pandemic, 40% of them have diminished in regards to their affordability and no longer exist, meaning that there's only a 60% supply that there was pre-pandemic for the affordability component for people living within a median income now being $78,000 per year. And so what does that mean? According to analysts, what that means is that when somebody goes and buys a home, typically the national average is that 28% of their income share, meaning that what they bring in an in income, 28% of that should be their maximum of what goes towards housing. Now with current median home prices being over $408,000 nationwide, that would mean that with the average median income of $78,000 per year, that would be 42% of their average income share going towards housing, which is a 38% increase over what the recommendations are that analysts tell us is the national median for income share to go towards housing. And so now that interest rates have gone higher, when we look at just 2022 to 2023, one of the biggest things is, is we've seen that the income share has increased by another 3.1% just in the last 12 months, even in spite of what's happening with interest rates, affordability still becomes less and less. Now, what are these cities? And I wanna run through, I, I went ahead and written down some stats because I want you guys to be aware if you're an investor or if you're an end buyer, you just wanna understand like what markets to stay away from or how to tackle these markets and know whether you're getting a great deal or whether you shouldn't be buying in that market because of the prices that you're paying. So I went through, I took some notes and I wanna share these with you. Now I'll tell you guys, if you're living in California right now, you guys have been hit the hardest nationwide for the five least affordable cities to live in across the entire United States. And I'm gonna start off with Anaheim. Anaheim, the income share right now is over 88.3% of the average household income. And that average in household income is bearing a mortgage on average of over $6,800 per month. And the median estimated household income in Anaheim is $92,000 per year. Now the median home price in Anaheim is just over $1 million, scraping that $1,022,000 for the average median home in Anaheim. And the change in the sales prices have increased 3.1% from 2022 to 2023. Now the second most expensive city to live in that has the least amount of affordability is the Bay Area, San Francisco. And so I, I always love saying in San Francisco, the coldest winter you've ever had is if you've ever spent a summer in San Francisco. And so if you guys haven't heard that statement, just take a trip down to San Francisco and spend it on the bay in the middle of the summer. You'll need a jacket, take a, take a light windbreaker with you. But if you need a jacket for that, listen to this. So the average median income share that most families are spend, spending on homes in the San Francisco Bay Area is 85% of their income share of what they bring in on an annual basis. The median mortgage payment is over 90 $500 per month, and the median estimated household income is $134,000 per year. Now, the median home price in the San Francisco Bay Area is $1.44 million, and they have increased by 3.5% in just the last 12 months. The third city is San Jose, California. The income share is 73% of the household income. The average median payment is $9,500 per month, and the average median household income annually is $156,000 per year, and the average median house price in San Jose is $1.4 million, with less than a 1% increase in housing prices last year. Now, Los Angeles, California, ranks number four, coming in at 72.9% your income share going towards housing with an average median monthly mortgage payment of $5,600 per month and an average median income in Los Angeles of over $92,000 a year. And the median house price scraping just over $840,000 at a 1% increase year over year in the last 12 months. 
San Diego being number five. All five of the most expensive cities to live in are all in California. San, San Diego coming in with 64.6% of your household income going towards your house and a $5,600 average monthly payment at an average median income of $104,000 a year, an average median house price of $843,000 per year. That's over double what the average median house price is everywhere else across the nation. And a 3.2% hike in prices for homes in the last 12 months. And I understand why, because San Francisco is absolutely gorgeous. If you get up to Carlsbad, some of those areas, they're just great areas. Now, everywhere else in, in the United States, the average um, home sales price is right about that $408,000. And so if you take a look at the five most affordable cities across the United States, let's run into these. These are areas where I see a lot of fix and flippers, a lot of people going in and buying portfolios of housing. I remember driving into uh, one of these cities, looking at a, a portfolio of 110 single family dwellings. And I'll tell you guys that the vast majority of them were actually really good investments in solid structures. It's the contrary when I went to North Carolina a few years ago, I remember going with Ty's brother, um, Chris and Ben, and we were looking at homes and it was absolutely depressing. The houses were just crippled to a fashion where they shouldn't have even been rented. And the level of tenant occupancies that were in there were subpar. It just living conditions that nobody on this earth should have to bear unless you're absolutely homeless. And even they themselves shouldn't bear that type of living condition. So look, understand that these median home prices are still great places to invest. If you can demographically find an area where the economics make sense as a growing city. Now, Detroit, Michigan has been on the distress list for the last 20 plus years since the automotive industry has almost disappeared off the face of the earth in the Detroit area. And so the average median home share of the annual income is only 18.5%, so extremely affordable to live. And the average median home monthly mortgage payment is just over $1,155 a month. And the median estimated household income, not bad. It fits in with the rest of the country at just shy of $75,000. And the median home sales price is only $173,000. So economically, if you have economic resources and a good job in the Detroit area, it's a good place to live. And housing prices have actually increased by 2.6% year over year over the last 12 months. Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And I know like Allentown, Pittsburgh, those areas, it's the old steel. This is the old Carnegie area and have traditionally been a great market for many, many, many moons. A lot of affluency, but it has been distressed in recent years. But still, if you go into Pittsburgh, there's still a lot of industry, a lot of economic growth and stuff in this area and still only about an hour from the Washington DC Bellway or just thereabouts. And so the average monthly spend on homes in the Pittsburgh area is 23.5%. So well under the median, the average monthly mortgage is $1,456 a month. And the median estimated household income is competing right there with Detroit at $74,000 per year. Coming in number two for the most affordable places to live in the United States is Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. This is the old Carnegie area, the old Carnegie still. This is where Andrew Carnegie was the first documented billionaire in the United States to go out and create his wealth in the steel industry. Still today, one of the most economically stable markets in the United States, only being less than an hour and a half from the Washington DC Beltway with Allentown, Pennsylvania, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and a lot of economic growth and, and a lot of solid economics in this area. It's only coming in at a 23.5% income share for housing at the average monthly mortgage of $1,456 per month and the median income at $74,000 per year. So still faring with the rest of the nation and the average median home sales price slightly higher than Detroit at $219,000 uh, for the average median home price and still a 1.5% growth year over year. So still healthy growth. Number three, Cleveland, Ohio. Investors, I've always loved the Cleveland area and mainly so because it's a good median family area with... It's one area that isn't the most affluent areas across the nation, but still extremely affordable and great for investors and great for rental income investments, homes. And so the Cleveland area has fared at 23.8% of income share of your annual income throughout the, uh, of your annual income. 
The median monthly housing payments are $1,362, so extremely viable, but the average median income is slightly lower than it is in both Pennsylvania and Detroit at $68,000 uh, $68, per year, and the median house price at $204,000, but still housing growth of 2.4% year over year. Now, Pennsylvania competing with its neighbor in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, Philadelphia coming in at number five for the most affordable cities to live in across the United States and faring at a 24% income share and a median monthly household payment of $1,761 per month and the average median household income, believe it or not, ladies and gentlemen, $88,000 a year. So it's actually in excess of the annual, the national average income and the average median house price being $265,000 with a 1% year over year growth. Now, what does this mean for investors? If you're dissecting this and you're looking at this from a perspective from an investment model, I would sit back and look at the growth pattern from the, the California area and look at it relative to market compressions. I did this back in 2008. And in 2008, my wife and I actually landed up getting married in Laguna Beach in 2006, and we loved the area. We wanted to get married along the coastal area there, and we just always loved that area. So one of the things that we did is we always had a dream to buy a home in that area. So after the 2008 recession, we looked back and we looked at warehouses were at the top of the market in 2007, and on average, coastal houses that were along um, San Capistrano, um, Laguna Beach, Dana Point, going down to Carlsbad, with the exception of Oceanside being more affordable because of the homeless population, the big military uh, town that Oceanside is, um, everything else was sitting at about $1,100 per square foot at the height of the market. Now, the market got crushed, and houses were selling for just over $550 to $600 per square foot. So they almost got cut in half of their sales prices for the average sale that was happening post-recession. And so one of the biggest things is being able to recognize that. So we knew that housing could go only go up from where it was at. So in 2010, we went down to Laguna Beach and right off of PCH Highway, there was some homes up on the hill in, the, in Laguna Village. And we picked up a home for just over $650 a square foot. And we renovated that home and we enjoyed it for a few years. And actually in 2016, we sold it feeling like it was at the height of the market because not only did the prices exceed where they were in 2008, we thought it was, it was the housing prices couldn't get any more expensive at a modest $1,300 per square foot, taking and crushing a profit. But homes now along that, that whole entire PCH highway are in excess of $1,600 a square foot in similar markets. So ladies and gentlemen, understand that markets rebound. And if you compare it to historical lows and historical highs, you can kind of gauge the market, assuming that over the course of time, market values will go up even past where they are today. So in spite of us feeling like, wow, home and housing prices can't get any more expensive than where they are today, it was the exact same feeling that we investors had back in 2008. I kept telling myself, there is absolutely no way that the market can bear over $1,100 a square foot. And that once we get there, we know that we're, our eyes are in front of a recession. So I knew that a recession was coming by the time we hit 2018 because the prices of homes and the prices of commercial real estate continue to grow. And they continue to grow and continue to grow and continue to grow and continue to grow way past the height of the market of 2007 numbers and so I thought that another market correction was coming. Little did I know that the pandemic was going to end. There was going to be um, external circumstances that would make the market push up past where they were exponentially. And believe you me, it might not be the Spanish flu. It might not be the coronavirus. But there will be something else, ladies and gentlemen, that's going to push the market in 10 years from now, 12 years from now. And it's going to exceed the numbers of where we are today. So the best thing you can do is buy when the market compresses and numbers go down and allow yourself to take advantage of the long-term holding as markets values appreciate and go up over the course of time. And they will. Patience is a virtue. And if you look at the stock market, you look at cryptocurrency, you look at real estate, and you look at any long-term holding, the whole key component in there is long-term. Those that are the most patient, most consistent, and the most diligent in how they buy will always win the largest return on investments from real estate long-term. 
So if you're too anxious, too quick, and you have to get out, the only people that lose in real estate are the ones that have to sell during a market correction. So ladies and gentlemen, pick your market wisely. If you're picking in California and in some of the most expensive areas that you can buy, just look at the historical data and figure out that in spite of the increased sales prices, where do they sit from historic highs and historic lows? And is there a threshold of reason where you can bear a profit long term? And if it's iffy, go invest in another market. Now, if you're going into markets like Cleveland and uh, Pencil and into Pennsylvania, like Philadelphia, um, you want to be able to look at these markets and see what economic growth is happening in those areas. And as long as there's economic growth, like tech, industry, or anything that's driving employment, those are safe markets to invest in. I would never invest in a, a depressed market that employment is actually going down and unemployment is rising. And so those are the variables that drive economic growth, housing prices, and long-term profits in real estate. Ladies and gentlemen, for more content just like this, click and subscribe to our YouTube channel and smash that thumbs up button. Give us some love. Comment below what you do like, don't like, but always give us some love. And I look forward to seeing you next time. A couple of videos I'm going to recommend to you right here at the end. Click, watch, educate, and go out and crush your long-term investment career.